Hello and welcome to this new episode of I Dream of Wise. Today we'll take a look at how to use Wise as a sound design tool to help us with linear work. So today we won't take a look at anything about integration in a game. So this is a video I was working on as an exercise. I was doing the sound redesign of this trailer by Ubisoft for the Rayman Legends game. And in this trailer, as you can see, there's a bunch of little creatures running around. And uh, I was thinking, well, I have to create a voice for that um, group of uh, little creatures running, right? And also in this other scene, we have a bunch of people in the background. And yeah, I want some walla for these people as well. And I was thinking, well, it's do literally dozens of little creatures. So if I have to design them um, like in Reaper, I would have to record each single voice separately and then process it in some way and uh, maybe pan it accordingly and uh, set the correct volume and uh, reverb settings for each voice. And let's say that I want maybe five voices per second. That's really a lot of work. So of course there's some software out there that does the job. And the first that comes to my mind is Sound Particles. It's an extremely cool software. If you don't know it, I really recommend that you take a look at it. This is how it works. It's uh, capable of reproducing thousands of sound sources spread over a 3D space. So basically you create these sources and you give them a movement to follow. And then you set up uh, microphone positions and you record the sounds. So this is a very powerful software, but it's also pretty expensive. It's uh, a couple hundred dollars. And uh, it also has a learning curve. It's quite intuitive, but you still have to learn how to use it in order to get good results. So the thing is that we already know how to use WISE. And WISE has already a ton of features regarding randomization and spatializations of sound. So let's try and use WISE to achieve more or less the same results. So what I did is... Um, I recorded a bunch of uh, individual callouts for the little black guys and the little green guys. So let's start with the green guys first, okay? So I'll import them into a random container. So we've got 23 individual callouts in here. So set the random container to shuffle and avoid repeating last. I would say six is a good number. So the first thing I want to do is um, alter the positioning. So I want every single voice to come from a different point in the stereo field. The sound redesign exercise I'm doing will be just stereo. So if it was a surround exercise, maybe I will do it differently. But let's think about a stereo application first. We're going to set the position to 3D and the position source as user defined. Let's go to the position editor and see what we can customize here. So we can determine paths here. Let's create a new path and we'll just leave the name as it is. With this editor, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, you can determine a path for the sound to follow. In my case, I don't really need a path. I just want point sources. Also because the callouts that I recorded are so short that you wouldn't even understand that the sound is moving. So this is how they sound. Instead of creating a bunch of paths and uh, setting up individual point sources around and um, setting it so that every sound will pick a different path, what I'll do is just randomize the position of this dot so that this is the only available path and uh, every time a new callout is picked and played the position of this dot will be randomized. The coordinates of this dot are zero in the x-axis okay so this is minus a hundred okay this is plus a hundred as for the y this is zero and this is plus a hundred okay so let's set it back to 0 and 50. So I want the left-right randomization to be 50 and also the front-back axis to 40. 
we don't really need up down randomization because we don't use that axis play type random it doesn't really matter actually as we only have one path play mode step and i want to pick a new path when some starts let's listen to how it sounds right now <coughs> We clearly hear variation in panning due to the randomization of the left-right axis, but we don't hear yet a variation of distance. A closed sound sounds exactly the same as a distant sound, and that is because we didn't set any attenuation curve. So let's create a new attenuation curve. As for the maximum distance parameter, we don't really need to tweak it, but we want to tweak the output bus volume. I want to be able to hear part of the dry signal also when the sound is very far away. So let's set it to minus 30 at the maximum distance. As for the low pass filter, let's create a custom curve and I'm going to set it to 55 at maximum distance. And for the high pass filter, another custom curve, let's set it to 30 at maximum distance. Also, another thing I want to do is to play with reverbs a little. So in here we have the possibility to set a custom curve for uh, the auxiliary sense and actually we have two possible curves we can set one is for the game defined sense and another one is for the user defined sense in this case of course we're not connected to a game we don't even have a game so we're going to set up a curve for the user defined sense this of course will be a send to a reverb so i want there to be no wet signal when the distance is zero, so when the enemy sounds right in front of me, but I want there to be a wet signal at a maximum distance, so let's say minus 15, okay? Now we also have to enable the send in this panel, user defined auxiliary sends. I already created a reverb for the forest. It's actually the convolution reverb by Audio Kinetic. And the setting I found is um, this one. So I think it can fit with the scene. So let's listen to how it sounds like. So we definitely get a sensation of depth with the closer callouts and the further callouts. I think this is good. Let's randomize the pitch quite heavily plus and minus 300. And now let's make it way more busy. So we'll set the play mode of the random container to continuous. We want it to loop and we want the transition to be according to a trigger rate of let's say 0.2 seconds. We can also use a randomizer for it. So let's say minus 0 0.1 and plus 0 0.1. Okay, let's listen to how it sounds. <laughs> So some voices sound really close, so I would alter that in the position source editor. I will just set this back a little bit. <laughs> So I think this sounds okay for now. So let's say we want to record the output of this uh, random container. Since WISE 2016, there is a super simple way of doing that. Let's go to the master audio bus and in the effects tab, let's instantiate the WISE recorder plugin. So if we take a look at the interface, we can select if we want a WAV file output or a WAM file. You probably want a WAV file. We can select the output path. So I already created this folder for that. And I want the file to be called uh, green voices wise zero one. Okay, we don't really care about the game output path. And we want a stereo down mix, of course. And the default settings are already good. There is nothing else on the Mac version. I know that the Windows version shows you the output and if it's recording. So that is a pretty good addition. We don't really need to do anything else here. We just need to play our random container.
And if we go to the folder that we set up in the recorder, this is the file we find. <laughs> so this is way simpler than recording with maybe QuickTime or some other software that records the output of your computer. So I want to show you now how the trailer sounds with just the beds that I recorded in Wise. I did very little processing in Reaper. I just changed the pitch a little bit and added some automation and some uh, reverb, but that's it. Okay, those were the black creatures and the green creatures sound like this. I think this is a very simple and effective way of using WISE as a sound design tool and uh, the fact that there is a plugin such as WISE Recorder makes it way easier. I wanted to show you another example. In uh, our previous example, what we did was setting up randomized point sources. In this example, I just wanted to create some carbide sounds. So I set up two paths in here, one that goes from left to right and one that goes from right to left. You can't really tell in here, but if you take a closer look, this dot is green and this dot is red, while in, in here, this is green and this is red. And there is also some randomization going on, only for the front-back axis. This happens over a four seconds period of time. And uh, we've got some attenuation settings in here with the low pass, high pass, and volume. We don't have reverb in this case. And in the RTPC tab, another thing I did was setting up an envelope that modulates the pitch of the sounds over the course of four seconds, which is exactly the time it takes for the card to go from left to right or right to left. Over four seconds, the pitch goes from uh, plus 300 to minus 300 cents. I set up this attack curve to zero so that it creates an S curve that if you follow my cursor, it goes like this, okay? So it's kind of steady at the beginning and then it goes down quite uh, in a steep way and then it goes like this. Why did I do this? To emulate the Doppler effect. So if we listen to the car engine's random container, this is how it sounds. So these are the source files. Okay, so it's actually the same car at three different constant RPMs. So all of the pitch modulation and spatialization and attenuation is done in real time by WISE. If you want to do this, make sure that the scope in here is set to voice and not to node event, which is its default, because if you set it to node event, then the envelope acts only at the very beginning of the play event and not for every single voice that is later triggered. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.